Hello, welcome everyone to another episode of the Virtual Ninja Show. Today I have two experts with me and we are going to talk about Defender for Cloud. Uh, Mayan, first, please introduce yourself. Welcome back. Yeah, thank you, IK. It's great to be here again. So my name is Mayan, I am PM on XDR team, leading the integrations of new Microsoft security products into XDR, making them a native member under our umbrella. Thank you. And then I have Daniel, please introduce yourself. Hey, nice meeting you all. Excited to be here for the first time. I'm also a PM under Defender for Cloud, leading the uh, cloud detection response experience for Defender for Containers. That's awesome. And that's actually our topic, right? So we have new detections and new response actions uh, for Defender for Cloud containers either in the MDC portal as well as in the XDR portal. So this has been announced at Ignite. Tell me, what was that big announcement and what did we add? So exactly, we actually have a lot of exciting new features that was were announced in Ignite. First of all, we're adding a lot of coverage, new coverage around our detections. We have now more near real-time detection, which is super important when we talk about the containers which are ephemeral and dynamic. More than that, we are now ingesting more data that could help for custom rule detection, for investigation. We have now new response actions that are available for an easy one click of a button, isolation or termination. And we also address some uh, of the knowledge gap issues that we hear a lot from SOCs to have them more easier to investigate the content related threats. Hmm. And I'm pretty sure we will look into the details uh, when we get to the demo. But of course, we are talking actually still to, I will call them portals, right? So we have the Defender for Cloud portal in the Azure world, and then we do have the security portal in the Defender world. Um, are these new detections available in both? Yes. So these detections are available whether you are using the MDC portal in Azure or you have an integration, whether it's a SIM, Sentinel, for example, or the Defender, Microsoft Defender XDR. The detections are available everywhere. Okay. But then... A few of the response actions that we look into, they are specific to the XDR, the Defender portal, because they are just there. <laughs> and you are not exactly. just, there. I mean, of course, you had to develop them working in this integration, but um, it is a functionality of the Defender portal. Yes, we are enhancing basically the integration that Microsoft Defender for Cloud and XDR started a year ago. And we are building on top of that amazing integration, new experiences, which will help the security analyst persona, which usually is in the Defender XDR portal, uh, to have more streamlined and easier internet response lifecycle for the cloud and Kubernetes itself. So what are some attacks on containers? like? You know, oh, wow. I, a container, besides I, when I moved from the US back to Germany and the other way around, there was a big container, has nothing to do with it. But what are kind of attacks that are happening in such a container? Attackers are actually loving to attack containers because usually it's like, uh, as we mentioned, are less concerned about. So first of all, we have some basic attacks like crypto mining that we are doing, the attackers are leveraging for abuse, which is obviously uh, very uh, awful, but some of the most uh, critical attacks are actually around exfiltration or lateral mo movement. So attackers could actually leverage misconfiguration and vulnerabilities in containers in the uh, customer environment to actually lateral movement to the cloud and then to some sensitive storage accounts or sensitive data in other uh, data stores in your environment, which could have a serious impact uh, on, on, on the customer environment. Mm -hmm. Mayan, how was it for you to, again, build this amazing integration, right? So I know last time we spoke, it was MDC um, signals are coming or events coming into the Defender portal now, extending this to the containers. Um, how was the journey for you and our customers? Thank you, Ake. So I think it's a great point because, as Daniel mentioned before, we see the CDR story as a natural uh, uh, next level of the uh, integration that we announced uh, about a year ago. When I sat in this uh, very chair talking about uh, MDC integration, we brought all the data into XDR, uh, building on top of it, of course, correlation, entities, experience, uh, et cetera. 
As we talked with customers, we understood that um, bringing just the data, it's not enough, of course, but we also want to implementing the uh, story of XDR, uh, R stands for response. So we added these uh, new response actions that uh, we will discuss, but response having the response action is not enough because uh, it turns out that customers need the right context in order to get the decision, uh, do they want to take this response action or not? Uh, and specifically, containers are a very complex environment and very complex entities, uh, which we found a great candidate to start with the CDR story. Okay, so we are basically talking to Defender for Cloud customers that have containers and other uh, Defender for Cloud um, assets. And then also a Defender for Endpoint, Defender for Identity, Defender for something else <laughs> to basically have access to the security Defender portal to then leverage those additional, the incident correlation, the entities, as well as some of the um, response actions. So I guess we are ready to jump into the demo to have a look how that looks like in the Defender portal, right? Yeah, let's dive in. Okay, so here we are in the incident queue in Defender for XDR. So as you can see, we actually filter here for Microsoft Defender for Cloud Detection Source and specifically for Defender for Containers. We can see here the list of all the incidents that we have for Defender for Containers. So let's just pick one of them. Let's start with this one. So here is the incident that we have. This specific incident actually talks about a crypto mining activity. The first thing that I will mention here is, as I mentioned, the near real time detection that we have. As you can see, we added new preview detections that actually are being triggered in less than a minute from the event that is being generated. Another cool stuff that, uh, as we mentioned before, around the knowledge gaps that we're trying to produce for the security analyst is the threat overview profile, which is now a part of every specific container uh, detections. So this threat analytics overview is actually here to help the security analyst to get more knowledge about the threats around for containers. If we are clicking on the analyst report, we have actually an executive summary and a deep analysis about all the specific threats that attackers could use around containers. We actually have a cool picture here that could also demonstrate exactly how they are leveling it. But we don't stop there. We are also providing some prevention methods on how you could leverage Defender for Cloud to make your environment more secure. And we also provide more information on recommendations, how you can respond through uh, different friends and get more knowledge about the different tactics that attacker use with the Microsoft Kubernetes threat matrix that involves almost all the relevant techniques around containers. Yeah, you know, customers love threat analytics because you, are, you, you learn so much. I mean, you know, it's like education in there. It's uh, looking at the evidence, looking at um, possible identification that something is on your network like it's so detailed and and yeah so it's was awesome thanks for showing that. and it's important to mention that this is like the first analytics report it's more like an overview of all container with threats soon enough we will provide a more detailed ones for example if we are detecting a specific lateral movement uh, detections we will actually provide a detailed threat analytics report specific for this uh, specific lateral movement incident. Mm -hmm. So the analyst could actually know what to do in those specific incidents. Yeah, yeah, the researchers are busy writing these reports. So you mentioned uh, this, there is a few new preview detections. Do you have like a list of what are these uh, detections? Do we know? It's actually more than that. As part of the uh, our knowledge gap sharing, our research team in MDC actually provided a new simulation tool that is published in Microsoft Learning Documentation that we can provide as part of this show. With this simulation tool, uh, uh, customers can now simulate within seconds different attack scenarios that are actually how attackers are leveraging containers for their malicious actions. It's mm -hmm. important to mention that all those attacks are not impacting the environment in any way. Uh, those just for simulation, and they don't involve any risk for your environment. 
but you actually see which new detections and which attack scenarios we cover uh, as part of Defender for Containers, and it could also be leveraged for some uh, knowledge sharing for your security analyst on what they should do if they happen to see these specific alerts in a real live incident. Wow. Customers are always asking, and you know, Maya, we should look into providing this for the other defenders <laughs> as well. It's Absolutely. A big, big ask. So maybe, um, yeah, awesome. I love that. Yes, we will put a link here to where they can find it. And then I see uh, Daniel, my favorite. I see Copilot. As we mentioned, we don't stop there when it comes to uh, knowledge uh, sharing. So Copilot here, we also introduce a new uh, guidance around that area as well. So Copilot now, we also guide you through containers related incidents. For example, as you can see in this specific incident, it actually provides two guidance. You can either terminate the pod, which is being used for malicious actions, or you can isolate the pod. So as I mentioned before, one of the feedbacks that we have from customers is that providing them the response action itself is not enough because they not always know what is the right uh, action to take. By this guided response written by our great researchers, we're guiding them what is the right response action they should take. Mm -hmm. uh, in the future, we are also expecting to add a direct action by click for those uh, new actions that uh, Daniel will discuss uh, ahead. So I think there is a few um, response actions available, like if you go, for instance, now in that graph picture, but you mean Mayan response action that Copilot will then immediately take those actions? Yes, exactly, Heike. So right now it's a textual uh, recommendation, but uh, very soon we will uh, enable actually a clickable action right from this card uh, to take the action itself. That's awesome. I saw this in the purview portal already. So they are a little uh, step ahead of us. <laughs> yeah, this is right. We'll close it very soon. Do not worry. <laughs> Good. So what are we doing here now with the pod? Before we are doing uh, with it something, I care, it's critical to provide the right context for the analyst. Uh, as I said, together with our researchers and our customers, we identified a few very important, uh, 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 let's say, point of context that we uh, that are critical to get the right uh, decision, should I, uh, for example, terminate this pod or not? Another point, say, for example, the operational status of the container. Uh, container are ephemeral entities, and therefore, sometimes they are living dead. And it's very important for the analyst to know, is that uh, a container are still playing in the customer environment uh, and should be, uh, for example, isolated or terminated? The same goes, for example, for ownership details and other very uh, specific details for containers. This mm -hmm. is just an example how we are leverage uh, the concept that we as, uh, as XDR and Defender for Containers know to provide in order to help the customers to get the right decision uh, for their specific uh, uh, environment. Okay. So, but now, Daniel, what are we doing with the pod? <laughs> so, let's uh, see our new uh, actions in action. So, basically, when we click about the Kubernetes pod details, we actually can see that there are new two actions here. And also, oh, I see that even someone already took the measure and isolated this spot specifically. Uh -huh. So we obviously can release it from isolation, but we won't do it or terminate. It's as simple as just clicking it, provided the right comment and confirming the action, which we won't do it right now. But obviously, as you can see, this specific pod is isolated. Behaving like a real SOC analyst. Well done. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no demo tenant, yes. Um, so because I'm not very familiar with uh, Defender for Container, so Daniel, are these response actions general available in the Defender Azure portal, or is this also brand new now for Defender for Container customers that they can actually take these actions on the pods? Basically, all these new response actions are only available through the XDR portal, mm -hmm. as we see the XDR portal as the main portal for the security analysts for their deep investigation and incident response efforts. While we all have all the alerts, capabilities, and so on in the Azure portal itself, we are not providing those actions as a manual actions, but we soon enough, we understand the importance of providing an API, for example, for customers that prefer to take actions from different environments, even a third party tools. And we are looking forward in, in soon enough to provide also a public API so you could use these actions from third-party apps as well. 
So I think, as uh, Daniel said, now XDR became the main uh, customer-facing uh, uh, SOC product that we as Microsoft are providing. And as all the investment, uh, including uh, Defender for Containers or other uh, Defender for Cloud workloads are in XDR, we are making this shift from uh, uh, Defender for Cloud integration into cloud-native XDR. That will include also uh, cloud inventory for all your cloud assets and uh, more features that, again, making our XDR not just integrating some data within it, uh, but also providing you as the SOC analyst the whole information and context that you need. Yeah, thanks for clarifying this. Daniel, what other response actions are there for our Defender for Container folks out there? So as we mentioned, we also want not only to provide new response action, but to also to streamline the entire investigation process. This is why we also provide built-in queries with the new Go Hunt experience for Azure resources. As we can see here, once we click on Go Hunt, we can actually see that there were two control plane events on this specific resource. We can then go and see who are the users that took those operations. As you can see here, this is the user and more some information that could be very critical for security analysts when they are investigated a specific threat. Mm. Obviously, all this data is also available in the events hunting for a wool detection or even a deeper threat hunting or investigation. But we are just trying to save some time with building complicated queries, with providing some unique, specific queries that we know will help the security analyst team with their investigation. Is this something new for the Defender for Cloud people? I mean, you know, do they have the same concept right now? You can really, you know, you have an advanced hunting query, you can save it and you can then define, is it like a high severity alert, low response actions, and we will get there probably. But is this something new? So I think I can, this is a part of the, those the benefits that uh, Defender for Cloud uh, get from being in, in XDR. This amazing feature which allow you to get uh, raw data into alerts and customize which alerts are relevant for your environment uh, are exactly part of the advantages that uh, Defender for Cloud customers get now uh, as part of XDR. We need to remember, and this is also very important for the Gohans that uh, Daniel mentioned, that for the SOC analysts, most of them, uh, cloud security, it's not their like natural uh, uh, area of uh, expertise. And therefore, uh, bringing those events in context, and it's not just saving time, it's also allowed them to uh, get this, those events uh, right in the context of the investigation. And again, bridging that uh, gap of knowledge regarding cloud security. Wow, yes. And you know, for us, it's always, oh, it's been there for a while. Nah, nah, nah. But you know, for other people, this is totally new, right? So they have this... You mentioned we had the threat analytics reports, we have advanced hunting, but with advanced hunting, you can do so much more. You have the alerts, you can uh, suppress alerts, you can tune your alerts. Like there's so much more in that uh, XDR portal and we need to tell people, like you can't just say go click around <laughs> then you find it. So yeah, I think this is, this is awesome. So everybody out there, check out hunting. This is really, really rich feature. I think it's important also to mention that we are just starting out here, yeah? We are having more com features coming soon. We will include more events to advance hunting, more alerts for better coverage around areas that we are less covering now. And all these will be as part of the new experience, enhanced experience in XDR. So stay tuned also for the upcoming feature that will come soon. From the XDR perspective, uh, beyond the amazing job that Daniel and Defender con for Containers uh, uh, already did, more and more uh, workloads from Defender for Cloud adopting this approach and adding more context, more response actions, and providing actually end-to-end -end story from detection to response uh, with all the relevant context that the analyst uh, needs. So stay tuned, spread the love. Uh, we really want you to uh, test those features. Please share your feedback with us. It's very important for us. Yes, and I guess similar to what we did with the first episode around Defender for Cloud data coming, if there is news coming, I will have you back and we will do another episode. So for now, both thank you so much for being my experts on today's episode. And I hope out there everyone learned something new. And I hope a lot of you will now hop over to the Defender XDR portal and check it out. So thanks for watching. Talk soon. Bye.